What's up guys? We are back to make another video. Sorry we have been uh, kind of been missing in action for a while here. We've been just crazy slammed busy uh, trying to get a bunch of cars done, man. It's just been uh, a lot going on, a lot of little project work, um, motor stuff we had to get done. You guys saw the motor build we did for Ryan Turk, which we can't wait to see that finished. Um, we have a couple updates coming up for him soon. We have some parts coming in that should arrive this week and uh, i'll put together a little video about that but uh i wanted to give you guys an update on these two cars here so mainly this corolla that we've been trying to chip away at get it done so in the last video we didn't have a lot of this stuff kind of completed so i've been working on the fuel system um getting all the fittings done that i need for this got the cams in cam gears uh lifters cams are all torqued down valves are all adjusted um and basically just trying to plumb it all, get everything finished up. It took me some time because I didn't really know what I was gonna do on the front of the engine here as far as timing belt tensioner. But um, I managed to figure this all out. So I got all that done, built a tensioner bracket, uh, got this idler pulley in there, got the cam gears in, timing belt. Um, and now we're finalizing all the oil pump stuff and trying to plumb all the cooling systems. So originally what was happening was we were gonna put a original style water pump with this setup, but um, to route the belt around, because obviously the uh, the 3S uses a, a water pump that's turned by the by the timing belt, so um, it just complicated things to get the right length belt because we're not using the factory oil pump, which is run also by the timing belt. So contacted the customer and I told the man, you know, what do you think if we get rid of the factory water pump because it's not going to be a street car he will drive it on the street but uh it's you know show car he'll drive it to shows this is going to hawaii so he has obviously he has other cars so it's not really you know a priority that it runs a factory water pump where it complicated all of the uh how to route the timing belt so there's only a few options you could do with that so we went back to our basically this is what we used to run on this is what we run on the race stuff and um this race timing belt this length at least and then we eliminated the factory water pump and what we're going to do is go to an aftermarket external water pump which is down there so i had to mount that um and they're good they actually work till about they're reliable up to about 180 degree water temp so i don't think this thing will run that hot but um, so we got the water pump mounted. I have to wire that next. It's actually plumbed on the bottom side of the radiator, which I'll put the radiator in and show you guys that. But uh, I know what intrigues a lot of guys is the oil pump. So this is gonna run an external single stage uh, Peterson oil pump. Um, if you look down here, you can see where we have a scavenge filter. So out of the oil pan, if there's any big chunks for some reason, which there obviously shouldn't be, but it'll protect the pump. So I got this filter from Peterson as well. And we got the 90 degree fitting that clears there. <clears throat> that goes into the oil pump. And then it's gonna pressurize. And back there, if you could see it, is the oil filter where I relocated the oil filter. So I kind of did it in a way where it was easy for him to get to it. He's gonna have to jack the car up, you know, but at least if you drain the oil out of it, it won't make a mess and spill all over something as far as like the cross member or something else. So it's in an area that it's really clear um, once you break the filter loose and it won't make a mess as far as spilling oil all over everything. So that's where the oil filter is gonna go back there. This is your pressure side out of the pump into the oil filter again back there and then that fitting that you see kind of going straight up i'm not sure if you could see that there but there's going to be a 45 degree that'll run behind the motor come back on this side underneath the header and will feed right into this fitting down there so what i'm going to do here is probably pull this fitting out i'm going to cut it and weld another metal fitting to that an an fitting so i could just screw an an right on top of there so give you a better look at that that's what's going to happen there so um we got our crank trigger set up in which that'll run you know to the Haltech. so my next my next biggest thing is to get this thing wired and figure out coil setups so we did have 
We were going to use, I guess, the Haltech IGN-1 coils, but we're thinking about a different route just to keep it cleaner so we can keep the valve covers more exposed. Because, again, I think uh, if I get a good coil setup that looks nice, and um, I got a couple buddies that gave me some options that I think we're going to go with, and it won't interfere with trying to put a big, you know, IGN-1 coil covering the valve covers, which we don't want to do. Everybody loves these motors because of the valve covers. So I hate to kind of cover them up. So that's the plan. So um, another question we get is, why did we go with a dual fuel rail setup? Well, I had these intakes built by Custom Plenum Creations, which is Ariel out of Australia. And, you know, he was kind enough to build us these runners, which we have actually some more coming in real soon that I'll, again, I'll shoot a video about. So they were really designed for our drag program and I didn't want to run a single fuel rail with eight injectors. You know, um, a lot of guys do it. I'm not saying that's the wrong way to do it. I just figured if we had the room um, plumb, you know, to run two separate rails, that way we know for sure we didn't have any kind of fuel starvation on the drag setup. Is it overkill for this? Yes, it is. But um, at least now we can run a smaller injector for the primary and run a bigger injector for the secondary. So <clears throat> this setup is actually going to run on fuel or raise fuel and not ethanol or anything special like that so only because in hawaii it's hard to get the ethanol and the car will probably sit a lot so i prefer he didn't run ethanol fuel in this so it's got an 80 pound primary and it's got a 160 secondary so i'll probably put the primary injector up here and, and switch back the secondary uh, a little bit further back but whatever most case we're just trying to get this all plumbed up right now um it's got a fuel pressure sensor in there i have to get an oil pressure sensor which is going to go right here so the back here back in the head is going to feed the turbo which that fitting's already ran that line's already done and um i'll put an oil pressure sensor here this is for our breather tank basically overflow catch can breather tank is going to go there and the only issue i have is trying to fit a cam sensor back here which i'm hoping uh, I have a couple different options. I'm going to try them out. So figure out once I get that cam sensor in there, I can get this whole thing wired up and uh, figure out the coils I'm going to use, which I think I already know what I'm going to use there. Coils mounted and wired as well. So uh, I get a lot of questions about the turbo. It's a G35. I believe it's the 900. Um they make out of the 900 the 1100 for this particular setup in this car there's no reason to try and make you know crazy power i mean even if the thing makes 700 horsepower it's honestly too much it doesn't have a big tire back there so my main thing is to make it reliable and um make sure the customer can have a lot of fun with it but uh yeah that's pretty much the update on this i'm hoping to get this thing running real soon as well we already got the fuel pump um in the back of the car so i'll show you guys all that as well and i'll drop the radiator in real quick so that's the radiator just placed in there um i have it all out just so i could get the whole front of the motor finished up but it's really tight in there you can see where that crank nut is super close to the fan but it's enough clearance that we can still it's not going to hit the fan so uh we make all these drive assemblies for the uh these style dampers so we have all these these nuts and everything we actually make uh, we just made things better. I'm actually waiting on a guide uh, a guide plate to bolt right back in here just to stop the belt from rolling off. So that's actually coming in this week. We just got the belt in today for the oil pump assembly and, um, and that actually that scavenge filter. So uh, just to refresh everybody, 3S, first gen style cylinder head that we like to build with all our internal components. Um, 5S block. 3s crankshaft um basic standard compression it's like an eight and a half to one it's got a uh a brian crower connecting rod in there and we're probably shooting for i don't know 750 horsepower from this setup so we'll see i never ran these style turbos i'm curious to see how they work how they are as far as uh spool response time and all that so we'll have a pretty good pretty good idea at how this whole combination works so um yeah, I'll show you guys the fuel system now. 
All right, here we are in the back of the car. It's gonna use the factory gas tank. Um, there's actually the muffler that I have to finish installing, finish the exhaust system. But uh, it'll use a Weldon 1100A style fuel pump, um, 100 micron inlet fuel filter, and number 10 feed line, and number 10 line running to the, to the actual fuel rail. So that's all there, battery cable's there. I gotta get a battery for it and uh, just start chipping away at the fuel system, getting all that mounted and stuff like that. So we're definitely close. Um, not too much more to do after we get the uh, the Haltech installed. So that's gonna be the next plan, like I said. And the last thing missing is the alternator. So I'm kind of leaving this space out here um, for the alternator. So I'm gonna use these two existing bolts and probably develop a bracket off of this area. And I'm hoping I have an alternator that'll fit in here. I gotta move it forward to align up with these serpentine parts on um, on this crank pulley. So alternator is actually coming in today. Once I get the alternator in, then I'm definitely looking real good to get this thing all finalized. I gotta clean up all this factory wiring that's in here. Uh, a lot of stuff it doesn't need. Oil drain for the turbo. Um, and yeah, just keep picking away at it, you know? So that that's the update for this car. And I'm gonna show you guys a couple things how about this gem that just came in yesterday? So this is for another good customer in Hawaii. This, we're gonna build a all motor um, 3S GE setup. So it's gonna use the first gen cylinder head and we're gonna mate that to a 5S block. So yeah, this just came in. I gotta take this all apart and start working on this. So this is definitely in the pipeline as well to get going. Here's a motor that just came in from Barbados uh they shipped it all in this crate so i built this i built the motor for the customer but now he wants to finish all the fab work because he says he'd rather me do it and ship it all there one time so what we're gonna do is gonna be pretty interesting i'm gonna these are the tvis plates basically poured out the center i got all the throttle shafts out and the plates so what i'm gonna do is cut the intake manifold because this is probably the easiest thing for him um Cut the intake manifold and then basically build a plenum on the top side. It'll definitely look nice, flow. These plenums are so small. Um, they really don't move any air, very restrictive. And uh, we got the head flange in there to build a header. Uh, Boost Lab 6262 turbocharger, which is gonna be perfect for this whole little combination. And uh, yeah, get this header done. Uh, I'm gonna build him a downpipe setup as well. So we'll fab all that up for him. And the beauty is I kind of have a jig here for anybody else that wants to do a header combination and downpipe for like an all-track style set because that's what, that's what this is for. So um, we'll have a jig set up for that. So uh, I tried reaching out to some people to build me a header. Unfortunately, nobody really seemed like they wanted to help. So you know what? Hey, customer sent the motor over and we'll get it done ourselves. Plus this way, I could just send back his motor in this whole crate as well and it, it actually works out for both of us so so this is the motor going to barbados so this actual motor will end up going in that crate that i just showed you guys with uh and the head's already done as well so it's just a matter of mating the head to the block and uh but for right now we're just using his dummy engine to finalize the turbo kit so that'll be the plan for that and then over here, we have a 3T setup that's coming together. Custom header. Uh, I use this car as my jig setup for now until I get to finish this car. This is actually my Corolla. It's what they call a peanut. It's a 73 peanut. And this is going to use a Boost Lab 6266. So this is going to Hawaii as well. It's going to be in a, a drag setup that they're going to use down there and actually race it on Hilo, uh, the track in Hilo. So. That'll be cool. I can't wait to see that down there. So, uh, yeah, like I tell you guys, sorry I've been gone. There's a lot of projects going on around here. Uh, oh, let me show you guys this real quick. So I pretty much finalized the 4AG as well that I'm going to put a video together for this. And uh, intake manifold. I bought a Gen V style intake manifold, which I thought was probably the nicest. 48 millimeter ITBs, but this is all assembled as well. Timing belt on, cams are in valves lashed and uh this will be going in my started so lots of stuff coming um i'm gonna try and get some videos back together once i get this mustard car done 
and uh, a lot of engine jobs that I have to pick up at the machine shop. So 3TC content is definitely coming up. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks, everybody that subscribed. I appreciate it. I appreciated all the positive comments, and we'll keep it coming. Take care. Bye.